Okay. Yeah, what did you want to see me about? Oh, yeah, look. Um, here. What, what, is, what is this? Kind of $5 here. This. Oh, yeah, I was afraid you were going to ask me about that. We, we, we earned this? Yeah, I know, I know. That's the case that I worked on the other day, the one that I did. Chelsea O'Leary couldn't afford it, and I didn't want to press her. So, I'm sorry. I know we're not going to get rich like this. That's all right. It's very nice of you. No, it doesn't matter. What's money, anyway? Are you kidding? Got... Yeah, no, no. <laughs> no, it's okay, it's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll get by. We just won't eat, but we'll get by. Anyway, we shouldn't worry about that. I've got husbands to worry about. Take a seat. Uh, how's your flight? Slow. Can't wait to get this over with. I'm sure Carter feels the same. Well, I'll give him the assurances he needs, and then I'm heading straight back home to my family. Let's hope for all our sakes it's that simple. Why shouldn't it be? Phone for you, Mr. Jerome. Thanks. Duke, do you know Ferris? No. Ferris is one of our most trusted lieutenants. He's always stood by us. Right, Ferris? Oh, I'm a Jerome man through and through. It's kind of our policy to choose our people carefully, but I guess you've noticed that by now. Well, you can get your eyes off me. I've come here to do business with Carter. Once that's settled, I'm heading straight back home. Change in plans. Was that Carter? He's had to postpone the meeting until later tonight. Why? He didn't tell me, Duke, okay? If he wants to play around, then he better find somebody else. I'm not going to be the beck and call of some gangster. You'll just have to vouch for me. I'm getting out. I don't think that's going to work for us. Carter's not going to be satisfied unless he meets with you personally. So what do you suggest I do? Sit here and twiddle my bloody thumbs till His Holiness grants me an audience. Is that it? Duke, if it takes a few more hours, it'll be worth it to put this matter to rest, won't it? Okay, so you have a point. I better call her. I tell you what, I'll arrange a hotel room for you and Angel. You can rest, you can freshen up, okay? Be right back. Listen, why don't I get you guys a couple of theater tickets for tonight? Oh, on such short notice. Well, I got a couple of connections. Do you want to take in a Broadway show before you meet with Carter? No, I mean, if it's all the same to you, I'd rather watch the fight on television. All right, well, why don't you and I go together? Be good for us, a little entertainment, get our minds off business. I've got one of my people booking your room right now. Barris. He'll drive you over. This is the address of the hotel. Ferris, why don't you uh, take Angel out to the car, and Duke will be right with you. I've got some other business to attend to. I'll see you later. You don't like this setup, do you? I'm not too crazy about Carter calling all the shots, no. I would like it a bit better. Perhaps I could trust him a bit. No, no, you can't. You can't trust a guy like this. But look, if it's any consolation to you, I'm not going to let anything go wrong with these peace talks. You know I've got as much to lose or to gain as you do. Carter will come around. You and I will see to it. I hope so. understand why Steve was so down on the daycare center. What? Have you ever tried to talk to him alone? Tell me, I am not nervous. It's me, I'm nervous for you. Why me? Because you have the most important interview of your life right now. We could talk about the daycare center well, later. I still want to know what your plans are. Okay, okay, I will fill you in on the developments later. Were you just worried about impressing Dr. Hardy? Hmm, well, maybe you'd like to stand in for me. You seem to want the job more than I do. That's very funny. Come here. What was that for? It's for luck. Now, look, you better get Dr. going to Dr. Hardy's office. I'm going to walk you over there, and we can go over it. What strategy? What strategy? The trick is to appear confident, but not arrogant. You want to give the impression of being in complete control. Naturally, you want the job of assistant chief of staff, but if you don't get it, it's the hospital's loss, not yours. And so you have to convince Steve. Will you please stop with the self-improvement lectures? I know what I'm doing. Well, for the first time in your life, 
Whose side are you on anyway? I'm only trying to help. You can't be too prepared. The competition's bound to be stiff. Oh, you can say that again. Oh, do you know anybody else who has applied for the job? One, Tony Jones. He's going to be tough to beat. No nonsense. He's still wet behind the ears. Mm -hmm. Who else? That's all I've heard. Honest. You wouldn't tell me anyway, would you? What do you think I am, a gossip? Uh, come on, let's get the information from the horse's mouth. Steve Harding will tell me anything I want to know. His... So, after I politely suggested to our young doctors that they rethink their positions, they decided to redo the questionnaire. Yeah, well, that's fascinating. Yeah, that's... Well, hurry along, gentlemen. I mean, Steve Hardy's a very busy man. He has more important things to do, like talk to me. Well, thank you for the second chance. Come yes, on. Appreciate it, Dr. Hardy. I hope you yeah. do. Thanks, Thanks Dr. I'll get out of here. Come on, come on. Okay, we're out of here. I hated Thank to come you. down on them that hard, but they asked for it. They're fine doctors, and I like their spirit, but I wish they'd learn to control it. Well, we were young ourselves once. Yes, yes, I can recall being called on the carpet myself a few times for the same reasons. Yeah. Well, you're young pups, uh, you've got to test the water out once or twice yourself, you know? Yes, yes. We old fogies do tend to bend the rules once in a while, though. But let me save you the uh, trouble this time, Edward. You won't find a list of candidates for the assistant chief staff job on my desk. Well, no, no, I didn't think there was. A... Oh, you just developed a sudden interest in the desk you've seen hundreds of times before? <laughs> well, I, well just... I can't say as I blame you. I'd probably do the same thing if I had two family members vying for the same job. No, I, I, I just wanted to let Alan know who he was up to. Yes, Alan and Monica. Monica? Well, surely you know she was applying, too. Uh, excuse me, Steve, I have a family matter I have to take care Never guess. Guess what? Hello, gentlemen. Are we all ready for our interviews? Let me say right now that I wish the best man or woman to win. Well, I guess we can get started. Monica, since you're the sole female applicant, would you care to go first? Oh, thank you very much, Steve. But I would hate to think that I would get preferential treatment. No, if I were lucky enough to get this appointment, I would want it to be on merit, not on gender. Mm, well put. I'd like to put in power. Oh, shall we? Well, Tony, why don't you go on in? I need to speak to my wife. Whatever. Fancy meeting you here. I'd like to kill you. Something I said? Monica, how dare you lie to us? Lie? What? Whoever gave you that idea? I wonder if Steve would consider a candidate who had just committed the crime of justifiable homicide. Doesn't matter, it would be worth it. Can't do this. Shh. What kind of a wife are you anyway? Successful one, I'd hope. You know how important this appointment is to Alan? Almost as important as it is to me. Do you have any idea what you've become? Oh, everything I am, I owe to you. You have made me everything I am today. You didn't even want this job until you heard Alan was going after it. Now, that's not true. What is it going to take to satisfy you, Monica? Well, a nod from Steve would be nice. Well, you'll never get it. Well, if you believe that, then, Edward, why are you so upset? Because I think you're trying to knife me in the back, that's why. Thanks for your time, Tony. I'll let you know. Thank you, Steve. All right, who's next? Uh, Alan. We wouldn't want to be accused of male chauvinism. Alan? Hope you wrote something to read. It may be a while. Monica. Save the uh, sob story for someone who gives a damn. I have work to do. Excuse me, when Steve is ready for me, would you call me? I'll be in my office. I'll give you a call, Dr. Quarterman. Thank you very much. Here, Hal Geller, still doing 10 to 15 in the can. Oh, I think I'm going to call it a day. I'm beat. Yeah, me too. <sighs> mm. Okay. Well, why don't we uh, close up shop and hit the road, whatever you say. Yeah. <sighs> so, what's anybody doing tonight? I'm doing nothing. Tiffany is uh, working late at the okay. station, so I figured I'd just go home. What about you? Mm. I'm on my own. Robin and Odin have gone over to Sam's for dinner. Ah. Anything exciting planned? I'm going to wash my hair. It'll be fun. <laughs> oh. We certainly are a fun bunch, aren't we? Aren't we, then? Yeah. Well, why don't we all go to Duke's? Oh, come on. You don't want us alone. Do you? Well, well, I just asked you. Well, We'd love it. Well, don't you want to be alone with him? Oh, I can be alone. Other times. 
Oh, I suppose we could stop for a quick drink and then beat a hasty retreat. Well, the important thing is, is that Duke and Anna have as much time together as possible. Oh, no. The important thing is to make sure that you and my daughter are safe. Oh. And I doubt that your husband can run a club and do that at the same time. Hi, Robert. Contrary to what you obviously believe, I am not a helpless fool. Whoever said you were. Well, you keep insinuating... Look, all I want to do is protect you. From my husband? Need be. But... Uh, possible. Look, and you're an ingrate. Look, in, in, instead of, of moaning, you should be thanking me. For what? Well, thank you for making my life so very difficult right now. At least you have one, Ducks. At the okay, risk I'm... of losing my own, may I uh, offer a humble compromise? Why don't we all go over to Dukes? Is that agreeable to everyone? Mm -hmm. Yes, well, it beats being a prisoner in your own house. That is a unanimous decision. Dukes it is. Shall we go? Mm. Dukes it is. Yes. Well, let's keep it nice and mellow and easy. Madame, after you. Thank you. Mr. Scorpio, after you. Oh, no, 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 no. It's all right. The machine's on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. We've had a long day. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Need the money. Well, no, I need a martini. There's no answer at the office. Anna must have gone home for the day. Sleep, boss. It's after five. It took them long enough to get the room ready, didn't it? Look, I don't know what the problem was, but you ought, to, you ought to complain to Jerome about the service. I don't have time for that. I want to get this business with Carter over with, then I'm going straight home. I think I'll try the house edge. Hello. It's Varys again, Mr. Lavery. What's up? I'm calling for Julian. He said to tell you that he couldn't get those theater tickets after all. Hmm. Not so much for his connections. Well, apparently the show's all sold out. It's the biggest hit in town. Well, tell Julian not to worry about it. I didn't exactly come here for a vacation. We did manage to get hold of two seats for a dress rehearsal for an off-Broadway musical. It's called Smoking Gun. Oh, I see. Is that Julian's idea of a joke? Where it is, it's a hot show. Fair enough. We'll see then. Oh, one slight problem. Curtain's half hour earlier. Can you make it? Yeah, if I hurry. What's the address of the theater? Well, don't worry about that. I'll pick you up. Okay. I'll meet you downstairs in a bit. Well done, Barris. Thank you. Lots of surprises ahead for lots of people. Including our boss, Victor Jerome. Right. Anything else I can do for you, Mr. Nathan? Just deliver Lavery to the theater. I'll take care of the rest. I'm sure our guest will get a bang at a smoking gun.